How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Liberty Hour here on Spreaker Studio, streaming through the 16 Jackson AJ1 Twitter account and the A2 Jack YouTube channel. I'm back with my friend Royce, and uh, we were just talking about NFL mock draft here, and uh, he was just talking about Montez Sweat for the Buccaneers. Go ahead and continue with that. So, where I was at, Bruce Arians is the head coach there. He wants to build the similar scheme he had in, or the similar team he had in um, Arizona when they were a championship contender. He brought in Dion Buchanan, who's a, who's a nickel linebacker, uh, converted safety, and he's bringing in, he has JPP there, and he has uh, Gerald McCoy. Bringing in Montez Sweat as a speed rusher off the edge would be just a huge dynamic upgrade for the Buccaneers. Now on to the controversy. New York Giants. Now we know what they've done. They've been atrocious. New York Giants at six are picking Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. They are a 3-4 team. They've just sold house on all their top defensive talent. You put him in there as a defense, as an outside linebacker, pair him with um, another uh, second-year player in Lorenzo Carter. Defensive line can, is growing with B.J. Hill, and the linebacker leader in Alec Ogletree is still there. You need a dynamic pass rusher in that division with an Ezekiel Elliott, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, and uh, we'll forget about the other team because they're not worth talking about. But this team can be better with one pick, and that's for Sean Gary. Now, a lot of people want them to go quarterback. That's not going to happen. I'm going to skip all the way down to 10. Denver takes Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. They okay. have to They have to hit it out of the park. They have to hit it out of the park with the quarterback. If the Giants are not picking them at 6, Denver's the next likely spot at 10, unless somebody trades up to get them. And putting him behind Flacco, learn against an experience uh, against learn um, from an experienced leader with a top tier defense with Vic Fangio coaching the team. Perfect fit for Dwayne Haskins in Denver. My team, Cincinnati, is taking Devin White linebacker at LSU. This team needs a deep overhaul. Period. They, need, they just released Vontez Perfect. He's going to the Raiders, of they, course. Perfect place for him. He's out. He's on there. Perfect place for him. <laughs> They got rid of Vontez Burfecht. They have Preston Brown. They need a dominant speed linebacker, especially since they're converting to a 3-4 system. He can change the game in the AFC North. And uh, early prediction, hot take, Cincinnati Bengals with Zach Taylor as a head coach are a sleeper team in the AFC North nobody's talking about. They can challenge anyone in that division when healthy. We saw it last year. They can do it this year if they add the right defensive pieces. Now, we go to 17, New York Giants, Devin Bush, linebacker out of Michigan. This guy is similar to Devin White, not quite as good. The um, His speed is similar to Devin White, but his instincts are, are not quite there. You pair him with Alec Ogletree. You've already grabbed Rashawn Gary. You pair two Michigan players together. They know how to play with each other, and you've bolstered the front seven of your defense at the same time. That's a great pick for the Giants. I know I don't have them going quarterback, but that's um, that ship has sailed as far as we've heard. Okay, so let, let, you want me to cover the- so I was gonna say, well, we'll, we'll get, if you wanted to go over a couple more, that's fine. But let's stop right there and let's just go over what we have so far. So, um, yeah. I agree with most of what you have. There's gonna be a couple things I'm gonna disagree with. Now, um, first thing I would have to agree with you on Devin White. He is the impact player that you want to have. He is the player that you want to have as, as the heart of your defense. I, I 100% agree with you on that. Um, in terms of the Bengals being a sleeper pick. Um, <laughs> you, dude, hey. I'm sorry, man. I can't agree with that. Like the the Brown, first off, I think the Browns could be a an AFC championship team against the Patriots. That's my personally. That's that's my thought. Um, I think the Browns are going 11 and five. That's my thought. I will say this. I think that you. I think the Pittsburgh is going to be the worst team in that division next year. That that's that, that's oh. what I'm going to say. I think you guys will be third. I think Pittsburgh honestly could have a five or six win team. That's how bad they are, in my opinion. Um, Can Lamar Jackson throw? Yeah, well, and that's a but. See, my thing is, I have a lot of faith. It doesn't matter, in my opinion. I view him as the same light as RG three back. I don't want to say in his prime, but when he was actually very good. And I think 
he he has the potential to throw the ball, but I don't think he honestly needs to throw the ball more than 200, 240 yards a game because he can pick up 80 to 100 on the ground. If he's picking up 80 to 100 on the ground, scoring a touchdown, he's providing you enough spark for your offense to where you can win some close games, in my opinion. I think the Ravens can go 9-7, and 10-6, and six, be a wild card team like they were again this year. Um, I think you guys will still be at 8-8 eight and eight team, personally. I just don't think that you have you have enough pieces yet. I still think you guys are a year or two away. That's just my personal... Well, That's just my opinion. Um, but I want to get into your picture. We picks. can't ignore Sorry, this. Go okay, go for it. We can't ignore this. Marvin Lewis was a disease. He was. He was He was Jeff Fisher. Yes. Oh, yeah. I I believe in Zach Taylor. Yes, I'm a homer. I'll take all responsibility Do we expect him to rebuild that team, though, in one year? I do not. But I do think he will be better. That we will be better than Pittsburgh. That train wreck is... I agree. Do you now? You say sleeper team. Do you think that means playoff or what? I think that could potentially mean wild card, depending on how everything goes. I'm not a Nick Foles believer in Jacksonville. I'm not an Indianapolis Colts believer per se. When healthy, this team was four and one at the beginning of last season, and they fell apart when they lost Eifert, who they brought back, and a few other players who got hurt as well. So, yeah. I'm going I'm out a, on a limb. Go for it. I'm just thinking. Going out on a limb. I'm excited for the new direction, and I'm hopeful. Don't rain on my parade, man. I, I will. I will. I'll, 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 I'll let you. I'll let you still have your parade right now. What I will say is, I'm a believer in Nick Foles, but I'm definitely not a believer in Jacksonville. They do not have enough pieces to surround Nick Foles to provide a successful enough offense for them to do anything in that division. I, I have to agree with you on that. Um, now, let me go over your pick. So we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll run down. So Kyler Murray one agreed. Nick Bosa, too. If the Niners don't pick Nick Bosa, I'm going to break my television. <laughs> there, I, don't th- I don't think there's a way they could lose on that pick, though. Because you could Josh add Allen is nice, on the too. I, I mean, look, like you, I like what you said about Josh Allen and Nick Bosa. But I personally, um, that's why I actually think that, and I know you said Quentin Williams for the Jets. But I think that they... The Jets need an edge presence so, so badly. So badly, probably more than anybody in that division. And I think that Josh Allen is a perfect pick right there. Allen or Bosa, whoever the Niners pick first. And then I think Allen or Bosa is a perfect pick for the Jets to have because they need that so badly. I understand that he's a better overall per- person. He's a better prospect. But I, I just personally think it's going to be Josh Allen. And then I see Quentin Williams dropping down to, to Oakland. Um, so that's my... My personal thought on that that's the only thing i would change out of your top five because i agree that sweat's going to go five that's my only thing i would change is swap williams and allen three four um and then you're you're going to disagree with me on this but i have to say it look new york eli is done okay i'm sorry uh, eli's I, done hey. he's try. i'm sorry he's done you have nobody else there i understand that you're in a very tough division and a very tough predicament with what you have going on the eagles are a very tough team they just got jordan howard they're going to be an offensive threat presence they could be a contender in my opinion the redskins aren't going to propose much of a threat but the cowboys just got jason witten back they've gotten a lot of key pieces i'm expecting them to have a great season if the giants are going to contend they are going to in my opinion need a young quarterback quarterback that can strive them forward into the future with the uh, I mean they don't have much offensive pieces but they need to start from scratch with that offense in my opinion oh, I know the best way to do that is drafting Dwayne Haskins that's my opinion because he and, and not he's arguably and I, th- I I do believe that Murray is better but they could be argued that Haskins has more overall talent than Kyler Murray and I think that they need a quarterback like that to drag them into the future and be a head of the franchise to attract key free agents on the offensive side of the ball in future years down the road because that division is not going to get any easier anytime soon. I completely agree, but from what I'm I'm based this is just based on what I'm hearing, the Giants have no intention of going quarterback with their sixth pick. They're going to try and from what I'm hearing, this is from what I'm hearing, they're going to go try and get a top tier defensive edge rusher or some top defensive talent there. And they might stay back at 17. Now, I'm also not eliminating the uh, uh, possibility of them trading up to, let's say, two to the Niners and taking Haskins there and then giving the Niners a haul of picks and basically wasting everything they've done just to get Dwayne Haskins. We'll see on draft day, but from everything I'm hearing, 
defense seems to be the focus at number six for the Giants. Yeah, well, obviously we'll have to see on that. But uh, you said you know you had a couple more ideas of of stuff that you were going to come up with going down. So you talked about the Giants' second pick at seventeen. Go ahead and or not yeah second pick at seventeen. Go ahead and continue. You had a couple other ideas that sound like you were about to spot out. Go ahead. Yeah, so I said uh, Giants had a seventeen. Devin Bush. We lost out on Dwayne Haskins. It was Devin Bush. Um, down the line, I was going to go to the last two Raiders picks. Okay, if that's all. Yeah, 24. Uh, at 20, 24, DeAndre Baker, cornerback out of Georgia. Agreed. He is a a good player. I think he's an underrated talent at corner. He's not the greedy Williams. He's not uh, Byron Murphy out of Washington. Mm-hmm. He will be a serviceable um, perimeter corner with Gary on Conley on the other side. He And he fills a huge need for them that they've needed. Rashawn Melvin didn't pass last year, and um, – they just signed Nevin Lawson, who's not going to be much of a, a threat for Baker to get the job anyway. So really, you get young talents with Baker and um, Conley. And it's good competition, I think, for Antonio Brown and Tyrell Williams, who are now Raiders as well. Number 27, Raiders. Joshua Jacobs, running back out of Alabama. All right, that's good. This, we agree again. Perfect. This guy is the best running back in the draft. Oh, he could go deal. anywhere. I had him... Prior to this, going to Philadelphia. And because Philadelphia still does not have that running back they can depend on. Now the trade for Jordan Howard eliminated that. The Raiders do not have a running back worthy of being a bell cow. Joshua Jacobs can catch in the backfield. He can run up the middle. He can do everything you need to give Derek Carr the confidence he needs and the time to throw it down to Antonio Brown downfield. Maybe do a quick slant to Tyrell Williams. He is the guy you need running the football if you're the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, and to pair him up with – Lynch is still there, right? I'm, I'm not crazy, right? No. Lynch is still, no, okay, he's good. A, okay, he's cool. gone. Oh, he, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well, I'm, I am um, wrong. Okay. So, so my, my point remains that you still have, have a quick slasher and dasher in there is very important. But what I was going to say, though, in relation to Joshua Jacobs, that it's that, that that's what I would choose as well. But I would be scared because – some people might call me crazy on this, but I'm personally not a believer in Marlon Mack. I'm not. So I would be scared that the Colts could possibly take that the pick before. But I think that if that if they, he does not, the Raiders are going to pick Joshua Jacobs for sure. I, I have him going at 27 as well. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you on that. Uh, that's going to help a Raider offense that is already uh, full full of superstars. They've had a they probably had one of the best uh, you know off seasons as well um, head, heading into this next year. And I personally have the Raiders as a sleeper pick in the A. A- I don't know what you think about this, but a sleeper pick in the AFC West. I think they could be an eight and eight, nine and seven team, possibly enough to make the playoffs. Not quite, but that's my thought. I I'm along the same lines as you. I don't know how much better they will be. The additions they've made have been stellar. The biggest hurdle I see them having to get over is the Chargers. That defense is for real. And as far as the Chiefs are concerned, we don't know what's going to happen with Tyree Kill's um, allegations on um, the assault, not assault, I shouldn't say that, the um, uh, thing with his kid. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is the Kansas City Chiefs defense is not good. It was one of the worst in the game last year. And the Raiders are capitalizing on getting younger receiving pieces. and, And if you get Josh Jacobs, you might, maybe have the second best running back in that division behind Melvin Gordon. I don't see anyone else really. Oh, Philip Lindsay's in Denver. I forgot about him. But again, the Raider, that could be a very competitive division. I just don't know how the Broncos are going to fare against the Chiefs and Chargers or even the Raiders for that matter, if these picks pan out well. So what's going to, because I'm looking it up. What's going to happen to Marshawn? Is he just going to retire, or what's up with that? Because obviously he's not he's not signed anywhere right now, but he he's shown as an active player. He's not doesn't look like he signed anywhere. But what's going to happen with him? Yeah, so he signed a two year deal in twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah, two year ninety million million dollars. Yeah, and the way I interpreted that deal was it was going to be the last two years of them in Oakland, just to kind of give Raiders fans something to root for. And now they're playing a third season in Oakland that I don't think they really thought was going to be the case. 
and they're, this is just a send-off season, and they're going to move to Las Vegas. I think everything the Raiders are doing right now is for Vegas, not I for I have Oakland. to end that. We'll be right back with part five. 